Hi Oliver, Mike here at Well In Watches and uh, I'm making this video today uh, to visually show you the primary cause of the problem that you're experiencing um, with the movements you have. Um, the movement we're looking at here is the ST36 uh, movement which uh, you sent to me for an evaluation and this movement is based on the Unitas ETA uh, caliber 6498. Now Seagull have a couple of variations on this movement and this is, uh, this is one of them. And this movement uh, moves away from the tra traditional design by changing the, uh, the bridge layout, uh, the crown wheel mounting and uh, the regulator arm obviously, this really long extended regulator arm is also different uh, from the original uh, design. So going over the problem that we have uh, whenever the watch is wound we find that the winding pinion skips on the crown wheel and uh, using the original winding pinion that comes fitted by Seagull uh, we find that it skips almost continuously uh, it does manage to wind the watch but it does continuously uh, skip uh, when you fit a genuine ETA Unitas winding pinion you'll find that the skipping reduces and this is because the tooth depth as I previously explained is 0.10 of a mil uh, thicker so it engages the crown wheel teeth uh, slightly more and just under here where I'm pointing with the tweezers is where the uh, the winding pinion uh, sits. Uh, in this gap here the square gap is where the, the clutch wheel uh, sits. Now both the original Seagull clutch wheel and the ETA clutch wheel both work and engage with either type of winding pinion so that is not really a major issue. There is no slippage or wear or problems with the clutch wheel. Uh, the winding pinion is, uh, is, is the part that's becoming an issue. Now the reason why the winding pinion is, is slipping is because of this uh, design. Now to explain it more easily so that there's a better understanding, on nearly all uh, traditional Swiss made watches, uh, thousands and thousands of calibers share the same design feature. Uh, this is the ratchet wheel where the mainspring sits and this is the crown wheel uh, for the, the winding mechanism. So the keyless works come in here and they wind through here onto the ratchet wheel. You'll see that the crown wheel and the ratchet wheel are secured by a single screw and this screw is secured and allows the crown wheel to move via this single uh, shim. This is a tried and trusted method and it allows the crown wheel to move freely whilst reducing the amount of play uh, that it has. On the ST36 movement they've done away uh, with that design and they've incorporated a three screw holding um, a cover plate that holds down the crown wheel and the shim. Now this is something you'd normally find on a high grade kind of watch and um, the reason you'd find it on a high grade watch is because the tolerances are almost perfect every single millimeter is accounted for and everything is perfect so there is no play and no problems uh, when it comes to that kind of design because it's high grade for a reason so Seagull have opted to try and make the movement look more high grade than it is but they don't have the tolerances so because of the lack of tolerances and the move away from the traditional design this means that this actual area of the watch, the crown wheel, has a lot of play. And uh, it's not just in a single direction, it's actually in two directions. So when you wind the watch, anytime you turn something, it creates a torsional force, so it creates torque. And when there's torque, you can create movement in more directions than the direction that you're turning, which will come more apparent when I show you in a second. So normally the crown wheel would be a large wheel like this with a center hole and go on a small post with a small shim this has a huge post a huge shim and a huge crown wheel but it has very poor tolerances so that means that there is gaps uh, where there shouldn't be gaps and uh, the gap is both in this direction and upwards and downwards direction so with the cover plate on i have the cover plate here to show you as an example so even when the cover plate like this is on there is still a gap between this cover plate and the uh, the crown wheel part uh, just here so to show you what i mean by the torsional effect the torsional forces 
I'm not going to wind the watch fully and properly, but I'm going to show you so you can see the amount of play in the crown wheel when you try to wind. So as you can see, the crown wheel wants to move not only up and down, but it also wants, wants to move um, side to side as well. And it's this movement that is forcing the crown wheel to move away from the winding pinion. And this is the part that's causing uh, the slipping and the skipping. And eventually it's going to cause any winding pinion to wear down to nothing. Um, so if there's play here, it's going to create wear. And eventually, it doesn't matter if you use a genuine part or you keep the original part in place, you're still going to create uh, wear and tear in this area. Uh, unfortunately, this is part of the design of this particular model. So whilst you can change the winding pinion to a genuine one and it will alleviate most of the problem, the fundamental problem of this crown wheel being slack will still remain and exist and therefore this will still create uh, wear and tear on the winding pinion, albeit far less than the original. So overall, the, the major problem is even if you change this part, it's still going to wear away and eventually you won't be able to wind the watch. How long that will take in comparison to the original winding pinion, it's hard to say. Um, it really depends on how well used um, the watch gets or how, how often it's wound by the user. If the user wears it all the time, then of course it's not going to take very long before this winding pinion gives out and, and, and they're going to have to have that uh, repaired or, or replaced. So yes, changing the winding pinion will alleviate some of the problems, but it will not eliminate them uh, because the problem is primarily uh, with this uh, design. So I'm going to end the video there, uh, but I am thinking of a way of how we can improve, possibly improve, um, this design to eliminate the crown wheel problem. Because if you can er eliminate the problem of the slack, um, then you won't need to change the winding pinion. Uh, but it's a, it's a very big ask because this is primarily a part of the larger design. Uh, but we'll go over that uh, in the email. But hopefully this video has proved um, a bit more helpful than uh, just emails. But if you have any questions, then uh, do feel free uh, to ask. But until next time, take care.